when I heard that I got the Sigourney Award, I was shocked, thrilled, humbled, um, overjoyed. The, uh, the, the feelings were un unlike um, anything I had experienced as a psychoanalyst um, up, up to that point. You know, you, usually we as psychoanalysts um, work very much in private and our, what we do is not widely recognized even within the profession because so much of it is what happens between us and our patients in our office in a way that um, is protected from any kind of exposure to the public that's essential to the work we do. So to, uh, to, to be recognized publicly uh, for what we do, for what we've contributed to the field, is uh, is something that doesn't happen very often and there's nothing like the Sigourney Award that um, that reflects the appreciation of the national and international community uh, for work that we've done over over many many years it was it was really quite a thrilling experience where is psychoanalysis headed it's a complex question that that uh, has a lot of dimensions um, I, I think in some ways, more than ever, we have a tremendous amount to contribute to um, to our society, not just to individual patients, but to conversations that go on within the, a broader social community. Um, at the same time, I think all of us who work in the field recognize that uh, that a psychoanalytic point of view is not quite in step with where society is at these days. Um, we, don't, we don't translate very well to the kind of fast-paced, digitally-based uh, society that all of us live in. Uh, we, we try to slow things down. We try to uh, encourage reflection on what's happening. We, um, we, we try to I think many of the, much of what we do is to write kind of cautionary tales that, uh, that uh, encourage people to step back from whatever is happening in their lives and in, and in the society generally and to look at it, uh, to scrutinize it uh, carefully and, and uh, wonder, wonder about ourselves. And that's that kind of pace is is out of sync with a great deal of what society is is in, intrigued with at this point in our history well i think i think there there are some controversies that uh, that psychoanalysts as uh, as a discipline as a profession are concerned about that are internal to to our own discipline that uh, have a great deal of of interest in, in their own right. There are some that your question raises about the relationship of psychoanalysis to the broader society that are also important, that are sometimes talked about, sometimes not loved. In terms of the things that we struggle with as a, as a discipline, um, one of the most important uh, concerns is that we're, we're, we're moving away from what has been a traditional psychoanalytic model uh, that Freud introduced at the beginning of helping people to recover uh, experiences that have been repressed uh, and, and banished from awareness in one way or another, uh, but that come back to haunt people in various ways in terms of symptoms or characterological problems. Um, problems in living more generally. Freud thought that if we could recover uh, repressed or in some other way lost memories from childhood and make those memories conscious once again, that people would be able to live more effectively. And I think these days there's a lot of question about whether that really works as effectively as he thought that it would. Another kind of question that that I, I always find interesting is that we know that when any two people meet each other, uh, there's something new is created between them 
that has never quite existed before and will never quite exist again. Re relationships, I think we all know, are, are unique and have their own potential, their own depth, their own meanings. And yet, we also know that people come to us because the ways that they've lived typically have not been as effective as they would have liked them to be. So one, one question that we struggle with is how do we take this thing that's never happened before and use it to illuminate something that has always happened? Uh, and and that, that becomes a kind of interesting question in, in terms of how we conduct the work. There's a, there's a different kind of engagement and a different kind of focus and interest that we as psychoanalysts have than, than you can find any place else. Um, in, in light of that very dramatic difference in the way that we think when we're talking with our patients and the way people conduct their lives, including, by the way, the way we conduct our lives outside of our offices, how can we make ourselves heard in ways that, that can contribute to a discussion of social problems? I have, I have some words of advice, and, and part of it comes from the, my, my response to your last question about the ways in which it it's, psychoanalysis is in some ways marginalized in contemporary society. It's marginalized in in some ways uh, intellectually, uh, in some ways as a clinical practice, certainly economically, um, there are there are treatments that are more that look that appear on the surface at least to be more cost effective, and certainly are quicker than psychoanalysis. Um, so people who are uh, coming into the field these days are confronted with a lot of realities that are uh, challenging to them uh, in, term, in terms of establishing practices, uh, doing the kind of work that they as psychoanalysts would like to do, and simply making a living. Um, my advice in, in the face of that is to try to sustain the passion, the curiosity, the intrigue with what they're doing that led them to come into the field in the, in the first place. I, but I think that there is uh, an extraordinary um, benefit that comes with, uh, with being a psychoanalyst, and, and that is the opportunity to uh, sort of live an examined life. Um, on a, on a daily basis, an hourly basis, because every patient you're with in some ways challenges your, your, not only your sense of how to help them, but your sense of who you are as a person. And the, uh, the, the kind of forced engagement with yourself that is implicit in the work, uh, to me, is it, it keeps you young. And, uh, and, and it keeps you alive, and it keeps you, it keeps you growing as a, as a person as well as a, as, as a professional. From the beginning of my training, um, and, and this is somewhat due to the specifics of my training, somewhat due to the, the way I think as a, as a person, um, what I've been impressed by is the, uh, the variety of points of view that people who do this work can arrive at. Uh, people can be psychoanalysts, uh, work as psychoanalysts, be effective psychoanalysts, and yet see people, see the world, see people in very, very different ways. So that, um, so that I've, I've been impressed from the beginning of my training, really, which goes back many years now, by, by how many different ways there are uh, at, to be a psychoanalyst and to think about the process that you're immersed in um, when, you, when you're doing the work. Uh, unlike many psychoanalysts, this, this is especially true historically, I, I've never been able to believe that there's one point of view that is uh, 
better or truer than other points of view. Um, I don't think that there's one particular psychoanalytic approach that works more effectively for, um, for, for people or that uh, captures the truth of human experience more fully than, than others. But I believe that one thing that makes psycho, psychoanalysis strong as a discipline is the diversity of the uh, points of view that uh, people can arrive at from doing the work.